Lord Brahma said in Srimad Bhagavad, everyone may say that he knows you in full. Let them know it. What more can I say, O Lord? I cannot perceive your greatness within my mind, body or words. But in Raja, a tailor will come up to Krishna with a yard stick to see what size he is. Radhe! This is the tailor in <laughs> With a <the> stick. <laughs> this is the wonderful power of the love of Raja. Radhe, this is the power of love. Radhika, this is the power of love. Who can measure it? Tira can measure it. Sir Lord Brahma said, What more can I say, O Lord? I cannot perceive your greatness within my mind, body, or words. But in Braja, a tailor will come up to Krishna with a yard stick to see what his size is. This is the wonderful power of love of Raja. <laughs> the address Kalyani is illuminated by the sweet luster of Radha and Krishna's mutual relish of each other. The Acharyas have thought, we must see Mohana from Radha Rani's perspective and Radha Rani from Mohana's perspective. Krishna bestows auspiciousness on the world but Srimati Radhika bestows auspiciousness even on him. Govinda considers himself blessed when he attains Radhika's company. He feels that his world is empty without her. And she feels the same towards him. Rishabhanu's daughter thinks, I fell in love with he who can never be possibly attained. And out of love, I cannot even die of shame. There is no end to the chastisement of my superiors. I am completely controlled by others. What a contrary condition. Why don't I die? The parrots can see Krishna, but there is no way for me to see him. Mohana also cries for Radhika all night, missing her. Although he is Ananda Ghana Vigraha, the very form of an intense transcendental bliss. 
And when he opens his eyes, he thinks he sees his mother giving him a cloth that is yellow like haldi. In this way, he remembers her again. Who in this world knows how to love like her? But still, Mohana did not manage to experience her love fully, so he accepted her mood and complexion and showed an anuraga similar to Radhika. During the final 12 years of, Go of his manifest appearance, Goranga was burning in the fire of that love in separation. What a condition for the embodiment of transcendental bliss. Each pore of his hair was on fire. This is the agony of Krishna's Kalyana Karini, Shiradika, who acts for Krishna's welfare. With his own hand, Krishna completed a verse of Gita Govinda with the words, Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram. Radhe, give me your generous lotus feet. It is as if Krishna said to the poet Jayadev, O oh Jayadev, why are you hesitating to write this down? My whole life is fulfilled when I attain these lotus feet. Yeah. Oh. My job. My whole life is fulfilled when I attain these lotus feet. Who else knows how to love but she? The whole world tells me, give, give. And only she says, take, take. Ah, take. What you are, take. Mm. Mm. You are mine. Krishna Vancha put Purti Rupa Kore Arad Aradhane. Attaeva Radhika Nama Purane Vakham. She worships Krishna in a form that fulfills his desires, and thus the Puranas call her Radhika. Ah. Krishna Vancha Purti Rupa Rupa Kore Aradhane. Krishna Vancha Rupa Kore Aradhane. Mm. Krishna Vancha Purti. Krishna Vancha Purti Rupa Kore Aradhane. Ah. Krishna Vancha Purti Kore Aradhane. Krishna Vancha Purti Rupa Kore Aradhan. Huh? Ha. Rupa Kore Aradhan. Krishna Vancha Purti Rupa Kore Aradhan. Krishna Vancha Purti Rupa Kore Aradhan. Ata Eva Radhika Namah. Pura Neva Khane. Mm. 
She worships Krishna in a form that fulfills his desires. Puranas call her Radhika. She is the queen of the Kunja cottage who makes eager Mohana enjoy so much as if he is a beggar getting a meal in a royal palace. You need the art of gold. Is the art pudding? Yes. Shiraguna Dasa says, You are making everything auspicious for Krishna. My God. Oh, that's good. We are very happy to see that. When will your ankle bells that jingle while you fulfill all of Mohana's desires remove my deafness so that I will not desire to hear anything else anymore? Again. You are making everything auspicious for Krishna. We are very happy to see that. When will your ankle belts that jingle while you fulfill all of Mohana's desires remove my deafness? so that I will not desire to hear anything else anymore. The jingling of these ankle bells takes place when the Shyama Rasa is relished, but these Ankle bells don't just jingle straight away. They jingle. One minute. Mm. Oh. Rade, rade. Mm. The jingling of these ankle bells takes place when the Shama Rasa is relished. But these ankle bells don't just jingle straight away. They jingle within this relish. Yeah. This sound will awaken such devotional yearning that the ears do not want to hear anything else anymore. No. This is the poetic meaning of the word badhirya or deafness. Hearing material sound vibrations like radios, traffic, mundane topics and so is also meant by deafness here. All reading. Hmm? All paragraph read. Again? <clears throat> she worships Krishna <clears throat> in a form that fulfills his desires. And thus, the Puranas call her Radhika. She is the queen of the Kunja cottage, who makes eager Mohana enjoy so much, as if he is a beggar getting a meal in the royal palace. 
Shiraguna Dasa says, You are making everything auspicious for Krishna. We are very happy to see that. When will your ankle bells that jingle while you fulfill all of Shyam's desires remove my deafness so that I will not desire to hear anything else anymore. The jingling of these ankle bells takes place when the Shyama Rasa is relished. But these ankle bells do not just jingle straight away, they jingle within this relish. This sound will awaken such devotional yearning that the ears do not want to hear anything else anymore. This is the poetic meaning of the word bad badhirya or deafness. Hearing material sound vibrations like radios, traffic, mundane topics and so is also meant by deafness here. In this connection, Sri Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, that which is night to all beings in the state of transcendental bliss, the self-controlled saint keeps awake. And that in which all beings keep awake means temporary material happiness, is night to the seer, to the one who sees. Then Shiraguna Dasa sees the sweet pastimes through his spiritual eyes. Radha and Krishna dance the rasa. Krishna stands still and Radhika's ankle bells give the rhythm to the sweet tune of his flute, which is the emperor of sounds, and increase that sweetness. Meanwhile, Mohana relishes the sweet jingling of Radhika's ankle bells as well as the sweetness of his own flute playing, which is like an ocean of sweetness. That sound, that tune, is the great opulence of the kingdom of God. Brahma Samitha, his lotus-like mouth, makes the flute play the sounds of Brahman. This sweetness makes everything sweet and reverses the natural behavior of all living beings. It stuns the moving creatures and it causes the trees to get goose pimples of ecstasy. In this way, the jingling of Radhika's ankle bells causes the ocean of sweetness of Krishna's flute song to increase. Shilarupa Goswami wrote, O oh, all-pervading Lord, when will my ears attain the regular opulence of the best of sound vibrations? When I hear your flute song, which is mixed with the jingling of Urjeshwari's ankle bells that defeats the sweetness of the warbling of Lord Brahma's swan and that delights my dull 
ears. The dullness Rupa Goswami mentions is the same as the deafness that Dasa Goswami mentions in this verse. Mohana is the relisher of the jingling of Srimati's ankle bells and the relish of the sweetness of this nectar ocean awakens in Tulasi's heart through Mohana's relish. Then suddenly, one ankle bell falls off Swamini's lotus feet and stops jingling. It is as if something is missing then. Tulasi stretches out her hand to put the ankle bells back on and then suddenly the spiritual vision disappears leaving Shiraguna Das to lament. When will the jingling sound of your ankle bells remove my deafness? Shirasika Chandra Dasa sings, Alas, Srimati Radike, O embodiment of auspiciousness, my ears are incomparably deaf and the sound of your ankle bells is like an ocean of nectar. When will this sound enter into my ears and increase the bliss that I desire there, thus destroying the disease of deafness at the root? Thus ends verse 12. Rati, rati, go, go, go.